Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with the spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark is provided by Christian Brothers University, by Meriton, by YX Genomics, and by Serves. This month on The Spark, our theme is A Great Ride. We'll learn more about a nonprofit providing transportation to seniors and people with visual impairments, an organization using therapy horses and ponies to inspire, empower, and help individuals with physical, cognitive, and emotional disabilities, and a family-owned and operated Toyota dealership championing our city and giving back in big ways. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2016. Ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who making a difference in their own way so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show which is focused on business and community leaders who are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park and this is The Spark. They're a nonprofit providing transportation to seniors and adults with visual impairments. I'm here with the board chair and president for ITN Memphis, Tommy Cervetti. And ITN Memphis, let's start with a little historical perspective. Give us some history for ITN Memphis. Okay, first of all, I want to say that what ITN stands for is Independent Transportation Network. People are always asking, what's that ITN all about? And it's a network because we are one of the uh, approximately 15 to 20 affiliates across the nation. And that would be ITN America overall. ITN uh, America was begun when Catherine Freund, who is the current president of the organization, her three-year-old son was in a, a horrible car accident caused by a senior driver. And Catherine at that time decided she wanted to figure out how she could solve this problem, not the entire problem, but find a way to give seniors a, a transportation option because so many that are about to lose the keys to their car, having to give up their driving, maybe their vision is not so good, their reaction, they don't want to give up their cars, but, and they still drive, there's a lot of them that do, but this program would give them that option so that they could still remain independent. So let's talk about the specific program. So it's volunteer driven, which is really amazing. Yes, and, it and is. talk about the aspects. I, mean, I think that's what makes this magical is on both sides, it's volunteer powered. It is volunteer powered. Um, we get volunteers to drive. They drive their own cars. And right now we have approximately 18 volunteers and we can always use more volunteers. The average age of our volunteer is 60 to 64. Um, they're uh, highly educated. In fact, 11% are doctors, lawyers, and uh, PhDs, which we have one here in Memphis, a PhD. So, you know, it's, it's people that want to give back to the community. They're retired mostly, and they just want to help seniors. So that is what they've chosen to do by driving with us. And the interesting thing is, so it's, it's a little bit like a club. So the, the seniors have access 24 seven, and it's arm to arm, th arm through arm, and all the way to the car and there and back. So it's very personalized service. But on the other side, as a volunteer, when you're doing this, you're actually kind of gaining points that you can use for other loved ones Talk about kind of that dynamic. Yeah, we say that being a volunteer for ITM gives you so many benefits that you wouldn't get otherwise. First of all, you get a free membership. Membership for all is $45 a year. And uh, volunteer drivers are given a membership and then one to give away. They can give it to a family member, they can donate it back to the organization for us to give it to a deserving person. And that we also uh, can accrue miles 
when we drive the unoccupied miles, we accrue those miles and we can use them in a number of ways. We can bank them for our future need. In fact, we have a couple right now. The husband's driving. He knows that before long, he or his wife will not be able to drive and he wants to have those miles to be able to use them when, you know, when right. he needs them. Um, we have a program called the Road Scholar Program and that assists people with low income. And so people donate their miles back to the Road Scholar Program and those miles are used to offset the cost of their rides. And uh, also you can donate them to the program to help offset the cost. Talk about, you know, volunteerism obviously extremely important. And as you alluded to, you have 18 drivers now. The goal is to raise that number here in the Mid-South. Then on the other side, it's awareness and raising more awareness so that everyone knows the benefits of, hey, this is safety, it's quality of life, it's taking care of your loved ones all the way through. And then there's a fundraising component for the scholarships and the other elements too. So um, talk about kind of those three sides and the goals, especially on the fundraising side for events and ways that we can help. You know, a nonprofit always has to raise money uh, just however they can. And we've got a big fundraiser coming up um, because Memphis loves music. It's Memphis Loves Music, a musical valentine. And we're gonna have all sorts of musical presentations from local artists. So we're looking forward to that. It's gonna be really fun. But any other way that we, you know, we write grants. We, uh, this week we received a check from an organization it, that just gave us $2,500 because they had their people look into organizations that are doing good. And this one gentleman said, I saw your organization and, and you're small and I think you need extra help. So there you go. Wonderful. We always love it when we get these extra little dollars that come in. Talk about website, signing up. If someone says, I want to be a volunteer, or maybe I've got a loved one that I would love to, to refer them to. Right. What's that first step? Um, they can always call the office, and uh, we can send them applications for volunteers, for dry, uh, riders, and they can also go on the website, um, ITN Memf um, itnmemphis.org. The uh, membership application is on there and so are the volunteer applications. And I didn't say that the program is not free to the members that ride with us. They have to pay and it's like $1.50 a mile with a pickup charge, but this is a lot cheaper than uh, a cab. And the service of arm through arm, door through door is really important because a lot of our people are on walkers, we have some in wheelchairs and they can't manage all that. So we're there to help and we take them wherever they want to go. That's something I didn't mention, not just to the doctor. We take them to the beauty shop, we take them to um, to movies, to we've got some ladies that go out New Year's Eve and so we've already got their ride you know, right. um, already set for them. Well, I greatly appreciate all you do here in the Mid-South and for coming on the show and sharing. Thank you, Jeremy, for all you do too. With the theme of a great ride, it's pretty cool. We get to talk about therapy, horses, and ponies. With Southern Reigns, we have the executive director, Jill Haig. Southern Reigns, and uh, when you talk about Southern Reigns, it's, it's a full description. I'm only giving the, the little teaser for Southern Reigns, but give us a little bit of history. A fairly new organization here in the Mid-South, but what you're doing and the impact is phenomenal. So give us a little bit of history for Southern Reigns. Absolutely. Um, we were founded in July of 2015, and we provide equine-assisted activities and therapies for people with disabilities throughout the Mid-South. So even though we are kind of a fledgling organization, therapeutic riding has been around for hundreds of years. Um, and there have been other programs in Memphis that have um, had some startups and had some great success, but weren't able to really sustain um, their programming. So we are um, absolutely dedicated to make sure, making sure that we can provide service for, for as long as we can and to serve as many people as we can um, through our program. So uh, it's, it's children and adults and um, we're just so incredibly blessed to have had such great success in a short amount of time. So you have a year-round program, you have a facility, so where all this yeah. takes place, and you alluded to, I mean, you got from age five all the way up to 70 and above. Yeah. Um, give us an idea of how many horses and just, obviously, you know, talk about the program overall because it is year-round, you've got a mm -hmm. pretty large clientele, 
talk about the program. Um, wonderful. So we do provide um, different lesson sessions throughout the year, anywhere from a three-week session to a 10-week session. Usually spring and fall are our biggest sessions. Um, we're right, um, we are eager to be able to expand that and, and be able to ride in the rain. So one of our biggest um, focuses in the coming year is to get funding for a covered arena. Um, so that that way we don't have to cancel lessons. Um, right now we do have nine therapy horses and ponies. Um, seven are uh, ponies and, and full-size horses, and we have two mini ponies, which a lot of people wonder, you know, what, a, a mini pony is just a super tiny um, horse. And we have those because they're great to introduce a timid participant um, before we put them on the, the back of a 16 one hand thoroughbred, um, a mini pony is a great introduction to our program because they're very non-threatening and, and they're pint size. They're um, cute. And they're cute and, uh, and they do a, a great job in representing us in the community. And there's been great um, success stories with this. I know yeah. you already have had some amazing success stories. Oh yeah. Talk about the specifics of you know of, of riding, but just the joy, but also too how it, it kind of mimics a lot of the motion. So so talk about the therapy and the success. Well, um, we serve people with emotional, cognitive, and physical disabilities, and um, across the board, we are seeing groundbreaking results for lots of our participants. I can give you a few examples of those. Um, we have a rider with um, cerebral palsy, and when she first started riding with us. Um, our goal is not just to teach a riding skill, but it's also to improve life skills. So her goal is to be able to have greater use and function of her hands. She's very high toned, so she has a tendency to, to grip and hold on tight. Um, through therapeutic riding and holding reins and doing different activities where she has to reach and put rings on poles, um, that type of thing, um, paired with the warmth of the horse and, and the movement of the horse that helps her stretch her muscles and to work her core, she's gaining greater use of, of her um, hands and of her legs. So therapeutic riding is helping her in a way that it is empowering her to do great things. She's um, typically in a wheelchair, but when she's on the back of a horse, she's bigger and taller than everyone around her. Um, and that is just an amazing thing to see um, her mother has even said she's seen great progress with her and her ability to be able to use her hands to function in everyday life. So wow. that is absolutely tremendous. Um, we have the majority of our riders have autism um, and their ability to communicate is just, uh, it's multiplied tenfold when they're on the backs of our horses. Typically they don't want to touch or be touched and they reach down and they're stroking that nice warm coat of our horses and they're saying walk on. And when they walk out of the ring, they give their moms and dads a hug. And that is kind of that breakthrough moment for these families. So we're not just helping our riders. We're helping families to be able to connect and to do, and, and to do incredible things through our horses. You mentioned the fact that obviously you're trying to build a facility where you can do it indoors. Talk about the growth and just the ways that we can help. Because I've got to believe volunteerism is a piece of this. Obviously, awareness and raising awareness. I mean, coming on this is a big piece of that. But just raising awareness and more people knowing. And then, obviously, fundraising. Um, we have a lot of different layers to that. So the, the, the backbone of our horses, is, or the backbone of our program, is through volunteerism. We have 150 volunteers. And we are always looking for more because as our program grows, we need three volunteers for every rider. You need a horse leader and two sidewalkers. So if you are interested in coming and volunteering, you don't have to have horse knowledge. We train you and teach you everything you need to know. Um, as we grow also, we wanna build our participant base. So we're always looking to add new riders into our program. We currently have a roster of 54 active riders and um, we want it to grow to 100 plus um, to serve this community and to be able to do, to do as much good as we can. Um, and then just in regard to, to general fundraising, I mean, everybody who has a heart to give should give where, that, where their heart takes them. Um, we, are, we are very glad for the, for the gracious gifts of people who have supported our program because they have a connection to our cause. Um, and uh, that's one of the things through events and special fundraisers or just a direct gift, um, scholarships and sponsorships for um, families who cannot afford to participate in the program. That's one of the greatest gifts you can give to, to be able to let them participate. Well, greatly appreciate all you do and for coming on the show and sharing, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy.
The Spark Awards annually recognize and celebrate individuals and organizations that have made outstanding contributions to the community. Our most recent recipient of the Individual Adult Award, Katie Midgley, has devoted her professional life to helping research and fund projects that make life easier for a vulnerable community, Senior Americans. Since 2011, I have been privileged to work for the Plow Foundation, which is a Memphis institution. Um, I started as a program associate and I was given the task of, let's figure out if aging is an area that we want to get into. Do we want to be more proactive in the field of aging? I was able to spend 90% of my time digging really deeply into that issue. Uh, we are currently in the implementation phase of several amazing projects um, related to senior hunger, related to senior engagement and learning about health and wellness, related to housing needs, and um, I'm a point person who gets to be involved um, with great organizations and really seeing impact um, in how we're changing the lives of older adults in our community every single day. And you've been instrumental in not only doing the research, but pulling together, convening the resources, and then going out and securing huge grants for our community as well. Yeah, um, you know, it's a process. Um, it's a conversation, it's a discussion, but thus far we've brought in five different foundations, either regional or national, focused um, in aging. Uh, we recently, one of uh, my partners, Maritan, uh, received a grant from the Consumer Technology Association Foundation uh, to help implement smart home technologies in some of their foster care homes, uh, really using new techniques where you can take blood someone's blood pressure from far away, right? Or, or you can even like the floor, you can check an older person's gait around, that's around falling. Um, and so nurses can spend time doing, guess what? Nursing, instead of doing a lot of paperwork and that sort of thing. Um, we're in discussions with the Weinberg Foundation out of Baltimore uh, to see if they'll come in and we can uh, do some models that they've uh, implemented in Baltimore, thinking about replicating it here. So that is one of, the, one of my favorite parts of my job. Talk about personally, so volunteering, serving on boards, giving back. There are so many things that I'm invested in, whether it's my neighborhood, over in Park Conservancy, I have a lovely home in Midtown with my husband and, and we can walk to the Levant Shell and it's so important to me that we have great green space. That evolved into being co-founder of Roots, um, which is a group that's uh, getting young professionals, talking about the park, building up donors for the future, um, board engagement, whether it's Shelby County Books from Birth, the Family Safety Center of Memphis and Shelby County, doing incredible work uh, helping victims of domestic violence. Um, so my, I'm not an issue-specific person, and I know anyone who is invested in this community and who's watching this show, um, knows that you fall in love with this town. And it is amazing how easily, if you put yourself out there, you can get plugged in. They're a family owned and operated Toyota dealership right here, championing our city and giving back in big ways. I'm here with the general manager of Principal Toyota, Todd Lochner. You have a long legacy here in the Mid-South, over 30 years. Give yeah. us a snapshot of the history for Principal Toyota. I'll tell you what, we were formerly known as Performance Toyota. I'm sure a lot of people recognize that name. It was a household name. Um, and uh, about two years ago, two years ago, um, we uh, decided to change the name to Principal. It's same family, um, family owned and operated. Um, we just wanted to do things different. You know, the car business has um, been very stereotypical to people. And so we looked at guiding principles, transparency, integrity, honesty, um, you know, doing the right things. And not only that, but doing the right things and getting involved in the community with philanthropic activity and things like that. So we changed the name to principal. You know, what, what better uh, thing to do than to come up with, a, you know, your principal, your morals and your guiding principles that you want to go by. And that's kind of what we've resurfaced. We've closed the store on Sunday, uh, you know, to give our, our associates time to visit uh, fellowship and rejoice and be with their family and loved ones. And uh, in, in retrospect, it's even helped our sales even more. So, nice. Yeah. And you yeah. mentioned guide, and guide actually is an acronym <clears throat> that you guys use. It is. It is. It is. Um, it's our, it's the uh, our guiding principles, and it's um, you know we uh, we use it to um, 
um, you know, give the associates uh, ability to go back on a mission statement is, is flat out, you know, um, we live to provide exceptional care. Um, and um, and we're, we're excited about it, you know. You mentioned philanthropy, and that's really what I want to talk a lot about is you're heavily involved in the community, everything from sponsoring events to being out and um, pulling floats at parades. I mean, you name it, you're heavily involved. Let's start with you being a champion for our city. You recently launched a new commercial campaign that touts so many of the great talking points here for the Mid-South. Talk about being a champion and using your dealership, your advertising dollars to be a force for good. I'll tell you, it, it just, it, to me, it makes sense. You know, I'm so, uh, when, I, when, when I had the, the the privilege and the blessing to to take over the store in um, August of 2014. Um, I've always looked at advertising for car dealerships as very, as I used earlier, the word stereotypical, you know, with the, you know, come on down, we're having a push-pull drag, drag sale, $10,000 off, whatever. Um, I didn't want to do that. We didn't want to make it about price. We wanted to make it about, you know, the, the honesty, the integrity, the, you know, the transparency. When you come into our dealership, you feel something different. All our associates are on board. Um, but the main thing is that, you know, when I moved here, the, the things I was hearing about Memphis and, and, um, and, and to me, I, I quickly understood that it's a phenomenal community. The whole Memphis metro area is such a great place. There's so many wonderful things. I think it is our responsibility as business people. I mean, we, we want to help the community and we want the community to partner with us and spend their dollars with us. So why wouldn't we want to do our efforts in every way we can to build positive imagery for our city in which we live. That's just, that's just to me, is common sense, you know? Talk about some of the other ones because, as I alluded to, I mean, you're involved in so many different organizations and nonprofits helping them, sponsoring them, um, Germantown Municipal School District, parades, I mean, you name it. Give us one or two, even Chauncey's Chance. I mean, you've had some great storylines of just helping people out. Give me maybe one or two other ones that are really fun moments for you or sources of pride to say these are well, really things that we love doing. Thank you for asking that because the you know all that stuff the 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 public sees and and that's that's great. But the things I'm most uh, proud of is the stuff that is not seen by the public. Where my associates, the people that work in our store, take it upon themselves. For instance, Christmas before last. Um, they, they came up with this idea to raise money. So they, they approached and said, hey, what if we could wear jeans on Friday and Saturday? And if we do that, we'll all contribute $10 a day. And we can let that money um, that we raise um, go towards helping families in needs during Christmas. And last year, you know, we sponsored four families and we let people, you know, send in their ideas and through church organizations and um, different organizations. We voted on four families, and we went out and spent a thousand. We raised over four thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and this, these these families had phenomenal Christmases. And we brought all their presents to their kids and found out what they needed, from food to clothing to toys and everything. And this year they did the same thing again. Took it a step further with a local school. Um, one of our associates um, took it upon themselves um, and coordinated a local school. Got the parents, the teachers involved. The principal involved, and we're sponsoring 50 of the most. Um, the, we let the parent, the teachers decide of the 50 kids that were most in need. Um, we donated um, $80 per kid, um, and they've gone and picked out all these toys. And um, in in a couple of days, you know, Christmas, and we're going to continue this. But those are things I'm most excited because we're going to have 50 kids come rolling in the bus. We even got Walmart, Chick Fil A. Um, and a lot of local people on board. Walmart donated four bicycles, um, let us buy all the, the presents at, at employee cost with no tax. Um, so it's been just an amazing thing. And that's the thing I'm most proud of, that, that our associates look at ways that we can become active in the community. Um, from blanket drives to one of my sales associates that coordinated a big blanket drive the second year she's doing it again um, for homeless shelters. Um, that's what I'm most proud about. Because, you know, as a company, we can always do things. But when your own associates pick up the vibe and they see the importance of it and they run with it, that's when it gets exciting. So tell us where we can learn more, how can we follow the website, social media for Principal Toyota? <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, man, it would be honored for y'all to uh, you know, like us on our Facebook page. Um, we always are posting, you know, posting what's going on and keep up with the, uh, you know, uh, our current events and what we do and, and the things that we're doing in the community. Yeah, it's, um, we're, we're blessed and, uh, and we thank everyone in Memphis for for helping us so far. It's been, it's been a great, it's been a great deal. And we look forward to doing so much more, you know. Well, greatly appreciate all you do here in the Mid-South and for coming on the show and sharing it. Thank you, Todd. Uh, thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate you having us. Thanks.
Sometimes in life, we have a tendency to take things for granted, like mobility and transportation. The freedom of movement, being able to walk, run, ride a bike or a horse, and play with our family and friends, or having a car that we can drive wherever we need to go, are challenges for many of our citizens. As we saw this month, though, there are organizations here in the Mid-South lending a helping hand. Nonprofits like IT in Memphis are powered by caring volunteers, providing seniors and people with visual impairments arm through arm, door to door access to transportation 24 7. Southern Rain Center for Equine Therapy is using the power of mobility to change lives. Their therapy horses and ponies are inspiring, empowering, and helping individuals with physical, cognitive, and emotional disabilities. And local companies like Principal Toyota are not only making transportation more accessible, they're also giving back and using their resources to help nonprofits and schools and using their advertising to champion our city. Thank you for watching The Spark and for being a champion in our community. To learn more about each of the guests and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit WKNO.org and click on the link for The Spark. We look forward to seeing you next month and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound, hiring, and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. DataFacts is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Since 1964, Memphis Theological Seminary has worked to equip men and women of all races and faiths with The Spark to do ministry for the real world. We're grateful to serve our community and proud to support WKNO. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believed in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.